I've been feeling pretty beat up lately and wanted to just bang out a quick, single day project that could give me that feeling of accomplishment that comes alongside completing a build. I've been eyeballing these traditional Japanese sawhorses in Odate's book and thought this would be a great place to start. But this video is not about these sawhorses, and it's definitely not about this book, although I do recommend it highly. This video is ultimately a story about me. For those that don't follow me closely, I've been woodworking for the past seven years or so. And in the past three years, I've really made that hard left turn into not just hand tool woodworking, but Japanese woodworking and woodworking tools. And the question I get asked a lot is really, why? Now I've always been one of those people that's been very immersive with my hobbies. I was a fanatical surfer as a teen and well into my early 30s, circling the globe a couple of times in that pursuit. I'm an extremely passionate cook with a kitchen filled with unique ingredients and gadgets. And I love playing golf when I can find half a day that can't be spent doing something better. But honestly, as I've gotten older, I realize that this is just my way of finding peace. This is ultimately my therapy. I've been a government attorney for the past 10 years now, give or take, and to say my day job is stressful is quite an understatement. I've managed to maintain a pretty decent hairline, so I like to think it's from immersing myself in my hobbies and my passions as a distraction. I see what can be the best and worst of humanity on a day-to-day -day basis, and coming home and sharpening a chisel or pulling a plane just allows me to quiet the noise and focus on what is immediately in front of me. I'm not thinking about what some idiot emailed me that morning. I'm not thinking about what trial I'm in the next day or the next week. I'm in that moment, focusing on what is immediately in front of me. And in this day and age, that opportunity to be focused and present, to not just be in that moment, but be that moment is so rare. You're probably watching this on a smartphone, a tiny little device with all the information that has probably ever existed just a Google search away. And it's overwhelming. This world is most often overwhelming. So when I get in the shop and connect myself with my materials and my tools, I'm not worried about being overwhelmed or underwhelmed. I'm just out here honestly trying to be whelmed. My father passed away in 2018. And while not entirely unexpected, the events leading up to it can certainly be described as sudden and of course, extremely sad. And I didn't really know where to turn next. If anything, I just lost the one person who would always tell me where to turn next. So I remember after the funeral was over that I immediately started building. And really, that's where a cow dog was born, the commercial side of all this at least. I spent the next three weeks, almost 10 to 12 hours a day, in my shop trying to figure out how I was going to move on with my life. I was sad and grieving, but I had a purpose. I woke up driven to work on something every single day being covered in sawdust ensured that I was showering regularly and taking care of myself. I ate to have the energy to get up and do it all over again. And somehow, just one day at a time, I managed to find my feet. Now it's four years later, pushing five, and I'm honestly not doing all that bad. Now this is not me advocating that everyone tackle all their problems this way. I can't imagine that being super healthy for some folks. But the point of all this is, the craft, learning, the culture behind it, growing and developing as a woodworker, and then sharing that passion and teaching this craft, it's personal. Because if I can give someone just a little bit of that peace and quiet mind that I benefited from, well, that just makes this all that much more worthwhile. One of the wildest things that I never really expected out of woodworking was to connect culturally with something the way that I have with Japanese woodworking and Japanese woodworking tools. My mom is Singaporean and my dad is a third or fourth generation American of German descent. And like most people who come from a mixed background, I've always kind of felt like I never really fit on either side of the line. Woodworking as I first encountered it was pretty dominated by older white folks making what can, at a very basic level, just be called Western furniture. And to an extent, that's kind of what I emulated. And while rewarding, it did begin to feel a little empty. My father spent a ton of time in Southeast Asia and Japan and accumulated a fair bit of furniture from China, Japan, and Indonesia. So as a child, the furniture I grew up around just looked different. There were lacquered screens with gorgeous inlays, beautifully ornate carved table legs, rosewood seemingly in everything, and just really unique ankles and lines. And as I began building more, I started to crave that in my work. And when I bought my first Japanese chisel and saw that weird but unique forged construction and then used what at the time was the sharpest edge I've ever experienced, I was hooked. Making for me became so much more than just slapping together pieces of wood. It was connecting with a Pan-Asian culture that I just don't get to really see or interact with every single day. 
And these tools and this way of woodworking is at risk of going away. One of the last famous Japanese plane makers, Yamamoto-san, does not have an apprentice. So when he dies one day, sadly, his knowledge and his skill will die with him too. My hope is to inspire and educate people to use these tools and connect to their work in this way, to make people want to keep this craft and its culture alive. It's so much more than just making something out of wood. It's a way of life that can bring you some zen in a world that is very much, well, not zen. Now that this rant is over, you can see I've got a cute little pair of these sawhorses. If you're interested in making some yourself, grab Toshio Odete's book, For the Dimensions. I'll have it linked in the description and first comment below. Even if you're not into Japanese woodworking, these little ponies have a ton of cool applications in modern wood shops. They're great for glue up since you can slide your clamps under them. They're good for layout and assembly. And in my opinion, they're just downright adorable. Thanks for watching and more importantly listening. See you next time here at Cowdog Craftworks. Thank you.